Hello, I'm JW. Today's failed electrical product is this elegant device. Now, uh, this hasn't actually failed, but it is certainly a dangerous piece. And uh, what this is, is a water heater, and you basically plug it into the 220 volt AC outlet, and then the uh, white part there you're supposed to shove in a cup of water or mug or whatever, and it of course heats up the water if we use with whatever beverage you were making. And uh, that came directly from China, and because it has a Chinese type plug on, of course it was supplied with this uh, appalling item, which we've seen uh, many times before, the unfused uh, incorrectly sized pins and uh, all the rest. So uh, yet another one of those to destroy at a later time. Now the problem with this device here is that it doesn't heat the water in the way you would expect, as in there is no heating element in it. It basically passes the 220 volts AC directly through the water that it's heating, and of course has uh, certain consequences for if you were to put your fingers in the water with the thing itself. So let's have a look at that and uh, also we'll uh, test it out and see if it does actually work. Now what we've got then here is this uh, water heater, and so this came from China, there's all of the uh, instructions on the back there. Pretty much no English uh, included here. The only bit it's got down here at the bottom is 220 volts, 50 hertz, and it's 200 to 300 watts. And I've got a couple of other codes there, and also the uh, phone numbers and things, and the website at the bottom for the manufacturer, or at least somebody who uh, claims to manufacture it, because a lot of these things from China, it's difficult to know really who the manufacturer really is. And here's the intended use, so basically it's uh, just uh, put it into a mug of water, plug it in the outlet, and then of course it heats up. So pretty obvious there. And no doubt some of these are warnings saying do not put fingers in the actual container, because if you do, electric shocks are pretty much inevitable. So let's just dig in and uh, remove the goodness from inside. So card there, if anyone wants to translate that, then uh, there you go. Go ahead and uh, do what you can with that. So uh, here's the thing itself, and uh, so this has the sort of Chinese type plug on, of course, as it's uh, intended for sale in the countries which use that. So we've got a uh, fairly short cord there. So it's less than a metre in length, and, uh, so probably about 70 centimetres or so. And here is the thing itself, and you see this is a very cheaply made and crude looking item. This was a very cheap thing, uh, it's less than uh, $2 delivered, so obviously you can expect uh, high quality stuff here. So you pin there, two flat blades of the same width and size. And all we've got here is, say, the flex going in the top, and then in here we've got a metal plate on each side. So there's one uh, on that side, and of course there's one over here as well. Not quite sure why it's got these plastic tabs over the top of just that one. The others also don't have any. And the thing of note here is this appears to be a magnetic attracting item. Let's get the uh, proper magnet in. Well, yep, yeah, definitely is. So uh, it's obviously some sort of steel or other material in there. Again, that's not particularly ideal, even if it's got some sort of coating on it, because put this in the water, there's a good chance of whatever that is. It's sort of. Uh, migrating into the water and uh, giving you some kind of metal poisoning. But the idea here is you stick this in there and this is live on one side and neutral on the other and then the current actually passes across the gap in the water itself and by doing so of course it uh, heats up as the, obviously the water puts up a certain amount of resistance. Now while that will actually work and heat the water, and we'll test this out in a moment, the problem with that is if it's sitting in a glass of water or something of this diameter, you put your finger in it, then the water itself is going to be at some voltage, depending on exactly how far it is away from the uh, parts here and so on. So if you put your finger in there, you will definitely get an electric shock from it. And bearing in mind, this is designed for use at 220 volts, so that could easily be fatal. And I'm sure the instructions say do not use when, uh, or do not uh, touch when plugged in, so it's placed in the container and then plug in without your fingers near it. But let's face it, uh, it's a fairly uh, shady type of device. So uh, there we go. So uh, let's just, just test it out and see if it actually works. And we'll also see how much uh, type of electric shock you could get from it if you were to put your fingers inside. So let's try actually uh, using this thing. Now here is the device itself, so uh, just the white mains lead there. And we're actually connecting into this uh, device here, which you've seen in other videos. So this gives us an idea of the uh, voltage across the thing and also how much power it is actually using. So that will just be on the display here. Now the other things we've got here, 
This is a multimeter, obviously, and it's set to record voltage. And it's going to record voltage between this black probe here, which you can place in the water. And it's actually referenced back by the other lead to the supply. And it's effectively the same voltage you'd get if you were standing here on the ground and put your fingers in. And the other thing we've got here is this filament lamp. This is a 40 watt lamp. And again, we've got this red probe for that one, which again we can put in the water. The other side of this also is referenced to effectively the ground. So again, we can see how much current could actually be applied from the water. So if basically if a lamp lights up, then there's obviously quite a bit of current going through there. Now, uh, just for the avoidance of doubt and the safety police, this is not running directly off of the mains. This is actually an isolated setup. So what these reference to is not actually the ground that we're standing on here, because obviously that would be fairly dangerous. So uh, certain safety precautions have been taken. But nevertheless, uh, this is not something you should necessarily attempt yourself. And of course, you know exactly what you're doing. So let's just turn on the power and then we can see uh, what uh, we've actually got in this sort of default state. So at the moment then of course there's nothing on the lamp or the beta because of course the wires are not actually uh, connected to anything. And if we check on here we see the voltage of the supply is around 251 volts. And that's pretty normal for this particular installation. And uh, power and current and everything are zero because of course this thing has no heating element in it. It is just two metal plates connected to the supply. So when it's not actually in the water, of course, no current can flow. Hence, we get the readings of zero, which we see there. So now let's try it actually in the water. So we'll place the uh, offending device in our tub of cold water here. Notice the clear labelling on the item to identify the contents. And uh, then we shall, uh, say, turn on again. And we can try using the probes here then just to see what sort of... Uh, voltage and current we can actually get. So just position that over there. So let's again turn on and this time we should see some current on the actual meter thing here to hopefully get some idea of how much power it's using. And although it's rated about 300 watts it could well be more or less because it all depends on the conductivity of the water and obviously the temperature and various other factors which uh, obviously are beyond the control of the device itself. So turned on and you can see it is actually heating the water there. And uh, look here, the power is actually about 700 watts. So that's uh, quite a bit there. Power factor is basically one, which is what you expect from a resistive heater. The resistance in this case being the water itself. And uh, voltage has dropped down a bit to about 226. That's going to be due to drops in the various cables and the transform and other gubbins we've got going on here. More sort of a normal uh, area. This thing is theoretically a 220, so uh, close enough. So obviously the thing does actually work, as you can see. So now let's just see what sort of voltage we can get from the uh, meter here. I'll uh, just turn it on again in case it goes into its sort of power saving mode there. So uh, obviously it's got zero there. So if we take the probes, the meter, and place it in the water, let's see what sort of things we get. So as you can see there, we're getting a various different voltages. That's in the region of sort of 93, 94 volts. Uh, we move about in the water. Yeah, so we're getting in the region of sort of 90 to 100 volts, depending on exactly where the probe is positioned. Now, of course, that's not full mode voltage of 230, but nevertheless, that is a significant amount of voltage there, and certainly uh, more than enough to actually cause a fairly severe electric shock. And so we're not actually touching the device. This is purely due to conductivity through the water itself. So, so as we move around the water there, it's, it's in the sort of 95 to 100 sort of area. And you may be able to hear it sort of uh, fizzling and bubbling away as the uh, water obviously is heating up. Now we'll see a bit of the uh, steam or water vapor coming off of the top of that. So that's basically the voltage. Now let's see what sort of current we can actually get through this. And for this we're going to use the uh, lamp we've got here. This is on the uh, red probe there, so uh, again, lamp uh, over there. Now just pause the video there a moment because when I was actually recording this the lamp was not visibly illuminating at all and basically it appeared there that the current was so tiny that the uh, thing wasn't actually glowing in the slightest but as you can see here in the actual video it is glowing a fairly dullish uh, red colour there. Now this is probably because the camera's better at picking up uh, infrared than the human eye but nevertheless there is a reasonable amount of current going through there so uh, as I was obviously saying in the video there, it appeared that there's no current, but 
as we can now see uh, subsequently, there pretty obviously was. So let's just continue on with the video and uh, see where we get to. So that's not actually illuminating there, regardless of where we actually place the probe there. And again, that's right up against the actual plastic thing itself. So not a significant current from there, but of course we're about to stick our fingers in there and just find out what it really is because clearly it's still around 90 odd volts there, so certainly at risk of shock. Now it's been on for a few minutes there, so see the power is now about 850 watts, so uh, quite a significant amount of power going into the water there. And again the uh, voltage is still uh, just under the 220 mark, it seems to have uh, dropped away a bit since we started doing this. And it's actually putting just under 4 amps through the thing, and of course that's what's heating up the water. Now one thing that may not be obvious on the camera, that the water itself has turned a rather strange shade. It's certainly not the nice uh, colourless stuff that we started with, it's now taken on a rather browny orange hue. So that's certainly not uh, recommended. Now it's going to turn this off for a moment. Now if we have a look at the uh, water here, we can see that it has gone this uh, rather horrible browny colour. And it is actually uh, fairly hot there, we feel the heat pouring off of the top there. And of course that browny colour is almost going to be due to these rather dubious steel plates or whatever we've got in here, which of course have coloured the water to a fairly significant extent there. So uh, certainly not something I recommend using and actually drinking the water. And bearing in mind that was its intended purpose, that's a bit of a fail really. But certainly it's uh, colouring the water away. And I would say that was sort of moderately warm at the moment. I mean it's not uh, not why we necessarily call boiling hot, but uh, certainly hot enough that you would want to say wash your hands in it or something or clean the dishes with it. So it certainly does operate as intended in terms of heating up the water. But again, <laughs> with that voltage coming out, that's uh, really not what you actually want to be happening. Now I've just amended the uh, setup. So what we've now got is the meter set up in current mode. So basically we've got our filament lamp here, the uh, 40 watt job we saw before. That now goes through the meter on the current setting of course on the amps uh, connection and of course back to our black probe here. So when we put it in the water this time, as well as the current going through the lamp, which in the last case didn't actually illuminate it, we can actually see what kind of current uh, would actually get if you were to uh, say poke a finger in the water. And uh, as before, we're just going to uh, switch it on, we'll get the readings on this device here and uh, hopefully see what kind of current we have. It's reading a tiny amount at the moment for whatever reason, but uh, again we don't really uh, particularly care about that. So let's see what kind of current we're going to get this time. So as before it's sizzling away in the water there, and current again uh, going through there sort of in the 4.2 amps or so region, about 900 odd watts, and say it does vary a bit depending on exactly how it's positioned and the various other factors. So uh, let's just see what kind of current we would get there. So we're getting in the region of 85 or 83 milliamps or so. And again it does seem to vary a bit as we move the probe around. Yeah so in the region of sort of 80 milliamps uh, from the water. And there you are, that's going through the uh, resistance of the filament lamp we have there. In any case something shorts out we don't obviously uh, create a dead short across the supply. So 80 odd milliamps, and that's more than enough to kill somebody. Bear in mind your typical RCD in your house would trip at around 30 milliamps, so this is of course way above that, and uh, clearly uh, something that's definitely not safe or recommended. So uh, yeah, it seems to be fairly constant in the 80, 83 sort of area, regardless of where we're actually placing that in the water there. So uh, certainly not recommended to put your fingers in there. And again we'll turn that off because we're actually slightly overloading the transformer we're using for this as it's only rated to 500 watts. And of course we're drawing uh, nearly double that. So that's an electrode water heater. Yes it does work and it does heat the water, but of course uh, rather dangerous as we saw there's a sort of 90 to 100 volts uh, on the water itself. And it can provide sort of 80 odd milliamps if you were connecting it through that 40 watt lamp there. And if we just connect it directly of course it would have provided considerably more current because the lamp obviously uh, wouldn't have actually limited the current there. So uh, yes they can be obtained, they seem popular in some countries, but uh, certainly not suitable for use uh, anywhere sensible. And uh, say so even if you're really careful with it and didn't electrocute yourself, 
it's going to leach out who knows what into the water and turning it a rather nasty yellowy brown shade so some kind of metal poisoning could actually result from that. So uh, that's it for this time and until next time thanks for watching.